Alrighty. Hey, BookTube. How are you doing? <clears throat> um, I'm trying to put this video together. Um, and I've been doing, like, research and trying to figure this stuff out. But basically, I have um, five things. Well, let me actually, before I get to that point. <clears throat> um... <clears throat> It's kind of windy out here, and it's really dry, so I'm getting kind of dry throat, so I'm trying to um, be cool here. But basically, um, most of you who are into comics might know, AT&T bought Time Warner. Um, there have been talks that AT&T is going to start cutting fat, um, and that might be a reason why DC's um, <clears throat> solicits... For the upcoming months, um, the farther out you go, the less and less we're hearing. So, um, what I'm going to try to do in this video is lay out five things that DC can do to save DC, or that Time Warner can do to save DC Comics, or that AT&T can do to save DC Comics. Um, at the end of the day, what all of these things that I'm going to list are going to do is basically, um, cut costs and increase sales. So from a business standpoint, I don't understand, um, why any of these things I'm going to mention, um, would be a bad thing, um, with a couple exceptions, which I'll talk about once we get to it. Um, but the first thing, um, and the reason why I have Comicron up right now is cause I'm going to need it to show you guys something in a minute. Um, so it'll be kind of a static image. Let me give you something better to look at, I guess. Um, there, you could read all about that while I'm talking to you. Okay. Um, <clears throat> basically, the first thing is um, DC needs to, and Marvel needs to do this too. So I'm hoping that this is something that happens. Um, they need to cut ties with Diamond comic distributors um, or work out a better deal. Um, I feel like the reason why um, companies went to Diamond is because Diamond was basically saying, like, you'll, you won't have to deal with returns ever again and blah, 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 blah. Because back in the old days, when I was a kid and I would get comics, I would get them at gas stations, liquor stores, grocery stores. Um, it wasn't until I was probably out of high school. No, that's not true. Um, when I was in high school, um, I hit up a comic book store a couple times. Um, just to find stuff that um, I couldn't find at um, the grocery stores. <coughs> Which is fine, whatever. But um, Marvel, and you'll see when we start looking at um, numbers of stuff, Marvel in particular, and I'm sure DC does this to an extent too, they overship... Um, because when you look at these numbers here, oh wait, hang on, I gotta go over here. When you look at these numbers down here of actual, um, estimated units, um, those are the amount shipped, not the amount purchased. So, um, at any time, <clears throat> um, let's say comic book stores, only ordered 200,000 or something. DC or Marvel might send um, out 255,709 just so their units could look like they've shipped a lot. And to be fair, this might not be Marvel, although I have heard from comic book stores it is. 
um, more of the comic companies than actual Diamond that does it, but um, I'm not one of those people, so I don't know. <clears throat> um, so, but getting comic books um, out of comic book shops and around more normies, normal people, would really boost sales a lot. And I want you to think about this. I mean, I've been in stores. I've been in Walmarts, grocery stores, whatever. Targets. And I've seen people um, pick up like those packs of Justice League trading cards. Or um, I saw some lady get a bag, like um, not a backpack, but like a like a little book bag um, for her kid who wasn't there, but it was a Captain Marvel um, book bag and um, like a tote. And she's like, oh, I'll get this for so-and-so. She might like it. I think she went and saw this movie. So there's all these impulse buys. And the comic book racks used to be in the grocery stores right by the registers. And they were impulse buys and a loud kid screaming and crying, um, sees Spider-Man or Batman is like, I want this comic. And the parents might say, yeah, just to shut them up. But in order to do this, the things that will have to happen is that the comic book companies will have to be okay with doing returns. And I don't understand what the big deal about this is because every periodical you find in a grocery store, they do returns on those. So the ones that don't sell at the end of the month, they get the covers ripped off and sent back for credit to the publisher or whatever. And every other periodical company does that and they're still existing. So why comic books can't do that anymore, I don't know. Um, One, some people say it's because um, comic books are um, printed on better paper now, and so, like, um, it would just cost too much to have people return stuff, which I think is total, utter crap. Um, But probably what happened when comics went from newsprint to slicks like they are now, like how most magazines are now. And they were having to pay money back on returns. It was probably a lot more. So if that's the problem, go back to newsprint. If it comes to having comics in newsprint or not having comics, I would rather have comics in newsprint. If it means the color Um, like back in the day, they only had four colors. Okay. I mean, I'm talking way back in the day here. Um, if that's the case, then that's the case, you know, like whatever has to happen to save the company, that's what you have to do. So now that we're doing, we're selling comics in, in my little world here in my pitch, if we're selling these comics at grocery stores, at liquor stores, at gas stations, at places where there's actually children who will see these comics and say, I want, I want, um, you're going to need to bring the price down a bunch. And the fact that you can sell these Walmart giants. Now, the Walmart giants are a really good step into the right direction because they are selling books at a place that's not a comic book store. But if you've ever been to where they're actually selling these inside the Walmarts, you have to be almost a freaking rocket scientist to be able to find where those comics are. Um, The Walmart that is closest to us, when I found them, it was when I was leaving the store. So that's not the best place for an impulse buy. Like you need it Um, in front of the registers, not behind the registers, but you know, whatever the point is, is that those are a hundred page comics. Okay. And they're selling them for five bucks. Um, Steve Donahue just did a video where he was showing the, um, comic book store editions of the stories that, 
um, our originals in the Walmart comics. And um, it looks great in that form, <clears throat> but having an, a 100-page comic um, with no ads, really, I don't think there's any ads at all in them, and you have basically four different comics in there, if you could sell those for five bucks, there's no reason why Black Cat number one right here is selling for the exact same price. And these units right here, I do not believe this at all, ever in a million years. Um, I just, I really don't. Um, I honestly, I kind of could see Damned getting um, that many just because of all the hoopla and it was the last one of it. Um, but these numbers here, these are more, these seem more real than, I mean, this is almost a hundred thousand more than the number two book. I just, I can't believe that. <clears throat> anyway, so I totally lost my train of thought because I was looking at Black Cat. Um, so to get back to newsstands, you would need to either kill your relationship with Diamond or fix it, okay? You would need to um, take returns, which means you'd probably have to go back to newsprint, which probably means not only could you, but you would have to bring the price point down a lot. And the fact that they've been doing reprints for anywhere from 25 cents to a dollar um, shows you that it is possible. Now, I don't know exactly what the um, profit margin there is, but bringing comic books under $2, I think, is very important. Under a dollar would be amazing, but under $2, you would have to do that. Um, I know I said that there's only five things to save DC, and I already named like six, but all of that is just getting back to the newsstand. Um, now, if you recall, um, a lot of people have been saying stuff like um, the comic book audience right now is um, like 40 to 50 year old white males or whatever. And, um, we really want to try to get younger readers in. So we're hiring all these like younger, hipper people to do all this stuff. And in the Forbes article that, um, kind of broke the story about, um, DC being in trouble, they were talking about DC daily and how they have these like young hipsters who are like, just so excited about all the cool stuff DC's doing. You don't need to do that. What you need to do is you need to have comics in a place where children can see them. That's it. That's how you get younger readers. I got my first comic books in grocery stores, in gas stations, in liquor stores. We would go in there. I'd get a comic, maybe a candy bar. I might get to play an arcade game. Um, but that was like the money that I was allowed to get. And... I know that sounds totally stupid, especially to a younger generation who just has no concept of any of this, but these, the only way you're going to get younger readers. And the thing that's funny is DC's doing this whole like kind of YA, um, teen line, like in the last year, DC's like pitched out like three different plans they were going to do in order to reach younger readers and all this stuff. So now basically what it is, um, and I think this is what it is. If I'm wrong, let me know down below. Um, DC folded Vertigo, and there's going to be some sort of teen DC line whose main goal is going to be, um, I guess they're going to trade weight, and they're still going to put out floppies to lose money for some stupid reason. But the whole idea is to get these books into libraries, which is a great idea. But a lot of people who hang out in libraries, they're kind of already set. 
if you're wanting younger readers, you got to get them when they are little. And the best way to do that is to make sure you have racks that are from floor to, I don't know, five feet tall. Make them eye level. Make them so kids could get them. And this isn't going to be anything that happens overnight because these kids aren't going to be people like me for like another 15 to 20 years where they're going into places and buying comics on their own with their own thoughts. Like, I'm going to buy a comic today. Comics were always, when they were selling a ton, they were typically impulse buys. They were, I mean, oh God, I don't think I met anyone who had like every issue of a comic or even had like, um, a good chronology of numbered issues because like I would get like, um, amazing Spider-Man 224 or something. And then if I saw like a couple days later at school or whatever, if my friend had 225, I wouldn't need to get that. I would just read his and, um, you would always get whatever was there. Like there were times when we would go to the store and I'm like, cool, I'm going to the store with my parents. I'm going to get a comic book. And there wasn't anything good there. And I ended up getting Speedball or something like that, you know, or Quasar. Um, I actually had one through 10 of Quasar. Um, that was like, I'm going to collect every Quasar comic. Um, but that was a really stupid thing to do anyway. But anyway, so um, kids are key. And when Dan DiDio is freaking out because he can't believe that the reprints are selling better than the newer stuff, a lot of that is because you have people who are going to the comic book stores are my age. Um, and they remember having that comic or reading that comic or remember their friends talk about an arc. Um, and they want to like go back and see that. And especially with the old ads in it, those are just so cool, you know? And, um, so most people are buying it based on the price point because they're only a buck, I think, um, the nostalgia value and then you have your newer comic book fans who are growing slimmer and slimmer by the day who are wanting to go, oh, I've heard of that arc or I remember someone talking about this, something cool happening in this comic. I'm going to check it out. And when it's only a dollar, they're up at the front. Guess what happens? People just throw them in as a impulse buy. So you're getting beat by impulse buys, you're getting beat by good stories, and you're getting beat by just a different world of comic. If you look at the artwork, the storytelling, whatever, that made that comic great in the first place, that made you go, oh, this should be one that we reprint, take a look at that and take a look at what you're doing now. Look at everything from the artwork to the story to, um, hell, the colors used. I mean, look at what worked and why those things worked. Look at what isn't working and look at why those things aren't working. So now we're going to go to number two. I'm sorry, that was still just number one. Let me make sure I'm still recording here because that would be, Wow. Okay, so we're still recording. Okay, so number two is going to be a no-brainer here. And that is going to be to cut books. <clears throat> now, cutting books um, is kind of a big thing because if we look at probably what DC is going to be doing, you're going to have your main DC... You're going to have your kid to YA line that's mainly for libraries. And then you're going to have your black label. Um, with black label, I think black label should stay in the comic book stores. They're prestige books. They look amazing. They're well put together. Um, the stories, um, I don't know. 
I don't think anything that's on Black Label should be canon for any of the characters. It should just be awesome stories that don't fit inside current continuity. And I'm going to be talking a lot about continuity here. Um, but let's just get to cutting books. So right here we have um, Deceased, which is like Marvel Zombies. Um, that is DC's highest book right now. Okay, that is an event. That is a... Um, some, I mean, not like an event, like a crossover event, but it is its own event. Batman Damned. This is a black label contained thing. Batman Who Laughs. Um, this is coming off of the event Dark Knight's Metal. And, um, I honestly don't know how much continuity Batman Who Laughs has in it. And then we get down to the 9 and 10 spot. Um, Batman 73 and Batman 72. I think 73. No, I don't know. Um, that came out this month, so never mind about that. Um, so we're in normal DC Ville right now. Um, this Walking Dead was the last issue of Walking Dead, so that like sh skyrocketed. Um, the Immortal Hulk is actually, I need to take a look at what's going on with that because that's tripping me out but anyway dc so batman is always dc's biggest seller and if you look we have three batman books and i say three batman books because if you look at the cover deceased who's on it batman getting attacked and eaten by all of his bat family people and then we have the joker here and we have batman who laughs there so basically <clears throat> for the longest time, DC is like, if we put Batman in something, it'll sell. Um, I think that needs to come back a little bit. Um, and we'll talk about why in a little while. Um, and then we have Superman Year One, which is kind of an event. And I think this is a reprint, actually. That's what the asterisk is, I think. I'm not 100% on that. Um, and then Event Leviathan. Okay. Um, Wow, this is another thing, a, a way to cut books, but this is actually another thing. You need to not do events all the time. Um, events should be something that when they happen, it's such a big deal that every single person on the planet needs to get those. You don't do an event every time an event ends because they stop being eventful. And most of the time, the things that happen in these events don't even change continuity or have any lasting effects so why the hell are you doing them um, if you're going to do them at all and it's not going to change anything that should be like a black label thing something out of main continuity should not be in the main things um, the main books the books that we're basically going to be talking about right here these should be sold at newsstands everywhere. Your YA books and all that stuff, the books that are selling like three to 4,000 that used to be Vertigo titles, those can go directly to libraries. If you want to have them at comic book stores too, go ahead, but they don't really sell a comic book store, so why would you do that in the first place? <clears throat> your black label books, your important ones, those should be out of continuity, and those should be sold at comic book stores if comic book stores are still going to exist if DC and Marvel stop dealing with um, Diamond. So that's a whole other thing. Now, the other thing about Black Label that I'm going to say <clears throat> is I think there should only be one Black Label book released a month. It should be a... I don't want to say an event because I just said don't do events, but if you're going to do these black label prestige books and like with Batman damned, you had one issue come out like every three freaking months. So if you're going to do it like that, then one month that one comes out and then the next month, if you want to be silly and start another one before finishing the one that you have, I say, go ahead and do that. I think it's a horrible business model. But if you could pull people in with one big book um, a month and focus all of your black label power on that one book, all DC fans will probably end up buying those books because the art team's amazing, the writing teams are amazing for the most part, and those are like big deal books. <clears throat> so don't do 
a bunch. Um, and have them all done at once. Do not do, don't even start promoting the books until they are written, drawn, and done. Waiting on stuff just kills. I was all into Batman Damned <clears throat> until it got pushed back. And then I just stopped getting it because I just didn't care. Um, Batman and the Outsiders, I was so excited for. And then that got pushed back. And then it got pushed back again. And now I'm not even reading it. So I just don't care. Like, do not solicit stuff if it's not finished. Period. I don't know why. That seems so simple. I don't know why that's not just common knowledge. Again, I guess that's another thing. Um, <clears throat> so I'm not going to be talking about things like Event Leviathan or Superman Year One, because I don't think these miniseries should even exist. Um, especially um, the Event Leviathan thing kind of flipped me out in Doomsday Clock. Don't even get me started on the train wreck that was Doomsday Clock. Um, if you liked it, that's cool. But as soon as things started getting behind, I just stopped. I couldn't be bothered. Um... So now we have Detective Comics. So Batman is their top seller <clears throat> on a normal basis. Detective Comics is um, at 17 and 18. If you notice, Batman, um, the one in the number nine spot, sold or shipped 81,000, almost 82,000 units. Um, Detective Comics, um, around 60,000 units for each one. So if you add those together, those are some pretty good numbers to get every month but after december i'm pretty sure dc has said every book's going to once a month so we won't have these numbers like this anymore um which is whatever uh justice league um got two justice league books there um superman's way down there um green lantern action comics Catwoman being this high boggles my mind, but I'm stoked. Um, Flash is this high. Let's see. Um, another Flash. And then we have Batman and the Outsiders number two. Okay, this book was originally, I think, supposed to come out in um, December as a monthly. I don't even know when the first one came out. I can't remember. And the second one didn't come out till June. That's ridiculous. Shazam. I don't know anyone who's reading Shazam. Wonder Woman. Um, it's all the way down at number 55. So in the top 50, Wonder Woman is not even in the top 50. That's ridiculous. Um, but she's shipping twice a month as well. Um, then we got like, we're starting to get more. Um, like Justice League Dark, Young Justice, um, Harley Quinn. Harley Quinn, I think that's actually pretty normal for Harley Quinn. That's solid numbers, I think. It might have dropped a bit. Um, well, actually, yeah, it's the same 66 this week and 66 last week. Um, Justice League Odyssey, Teen Titans. <clears throat> I'm going through this to kind of make a point here. Aquaman. Um, Nightwing, uh, let's see, what else we got, Deathstroke, 21, okay, and then we have Supergirl, <clears throat> um, at number 99, selling 20,000, um, and then after we get through here, we have I mean, honestly, a lot of these things should be cut anyway, and I'll talk to you about that in a second. But we're going to start getting into other things like Red Hood, which is one of my favorite characters. Um, Hawkman. Let's see here. We have Super Sons, Last Night on Earth, um, more multiple Batman books, Martian Manhunter. Um, and then the farther down we get Batman Beyond. Um, I don't know why they don't just pull Batman Beyond and put him into regular um, timeline. It would just save so much hassle um, as far as continuity goes. Okay, so anyway, um, enough of, with this. What I'm trying to get at here is that <clears throat> Batman and Superman are obviously DC's bread and butter. Um, they try to put Batman in everything, just like 
they go through phases where they try to put Harley Quinn in everything as well, um, or at least on the cover to sell comic books. And that works now and again for a little while, you know, whatever. But um, you bring Batman down to once a month. You bring Detective Comics to once a month. You bring Superman to once a month. Action Comics to once a month, which they're going to be doing anyway. Okay? So, right there. Okay, that's that. Batman should be about Batman. Um, Detective Comics, I think you take all the other Bat family members, all the Robins, Nightwing, Red Hood, um, Batgirl, um, whoever, if you're going to have a Birds of Prey book, all of those characters, and make that your Detective Comics book. Kind of like how Detective Comics was in... Was it the beginning of Rebirth or the beginning of New 52? I think it was the beginning of Rebirth. Um, Detective Comics was kind of like the Bat Family book. Do that. Make Action Comics the Superman Family book. Um, and just make Batman about Batman. Superman about Superman. Um, Justice League... I have a problem with to an extent. I've never understood why Batman's in Justice League. Um, I get it. It's fine. But his his problems are in Gotham. His problems aren't saving Earth from aliens or whatever the hell they're doing that day. Um, what I think should be done with Justice League is have the Justice League fine. But I think you need to <clears throat> start phasing out... Um, the characters that are in it, I mean, unless you're going to be making a ton of Justice League movies, then what I say is null and void. But all of these characters who are in different teams, different um, solo books that aren't selling, start working them in to the Justice League and make the Justice League um, be a big deal by using characters that aren't your, like, you have to use Batman to sell comics, you have to use Superman to sell comics, you need to use Harley Quinn to sell comics. Turn the characters that you already have into characters that people are going to want to love. Like, Aquaman used to be the biggest joke in the world, and I'm talking a long time ago. Like, everyone's like, Aquaman, Jesus Christ. Um, but as time has gone... There have been some really cool Aquaman runs and making Aquaman super cool was probably one of the hardest things in the world, but they did it. Um, the comics aren't really selling that well. Let me see what we got here. Um, Aquaman's at 79 selling about 23,000 right now. Um, but take characters from like, um, I don't know, like take the Justice League Dark and take um, I don't know, other, like the Wonder Twins. I mean, Martian Manhunter and Hawkman, they used to be in the Justice League, as far as I remember. Um, take these characters and start giving them more prominent roles in there. And then take things like Justice League Odyssey and Justice League Dark and have those be backups. Backups used to be a really cool thing. Like you would get a story... And then there's like another story um, that's like a separate thing farther on in the book <clears throat> and just have a Justice League book that has all this stuff in it. Um, Teen Titans. I mean, that's a team book. I guess you could keep that. Um, but just start like killing all these other books or just add these like silencer silencer should be in something like um i don't know maybe detective comics um and keep characters i have a big problem when characters from i'm a huge batman fan if you haven't known that already um when you have a batman character end up in another superhero's book, it always feels weird to me. Um, because for the most part, the people in Batman do not have powers. 
And when you put them with people with superpowers, it always trips me out. Doing it with Batman's one thing because, you know, he's the world's greatest detective, blah, blah, blah. But when you just start putting all these other randos in there, it's really weird. Um, I don't think it should happen. But basically, more team books. Um, there are a lot of characters in here who should not have, like Supergirl should not have her own book. She should be in action comics with other Superman homies. And some people might get pissed off because they really like Supergirl. I'm not trying to be a dick. I'm trying to save money. Um, and if we eliminate a lot of these books, don't have all of these freaking. And I know there's just a slew of more Batman and Joker books coming out. Um, it, like, I love Batman. I love the Joker. I love all of this. But it's not going to help if these books aren't selling huge. And I almost think that's another reason for it. Um, just because Batman Batman fans will buy almost any book that has Batman on the cover, as sad as that is. Um, now, number three. So the first one was getting the books on newsstands again. Second one was cutting the books. And by cutting the books, I mean um, putting more characters into individual books, do books with backups. So we're going back to newsprint. We're going back to returns. We're going back to all this stuff. And one of the things we need to go back to are action packed, exciting stories. And some of you guys are going, what? All of these stories are action packed. Just look at these covers. They're full of action. Yeah, that is probably true to an extent, but one thing that has to happen I think is all of these really long giant arcs that these writers are doing um, are just it is bad juju for the normie who is just picking up a comic for the first time if I'm picking up a comic for the first time and I don't know what the hell's going on and I have no idea what's happening and it's becoming like some Greek tragedy or something like that I'm not going to want to watch that. I'm not going to want to read that. I'm going to want to pick up a book, see some people fighting, good guy versus a bad guy. It's very simple dynamics that, especially your younger readers, will gravitate to. And then if you are like, oh, well, you know, I like my stories a little more mature, then have your black label books for stuff like that. And then you'll always have your more mature stuff. But there's still people like me who just want a real pulpy action romp. They want to see, you know, Batman fight his way out of a pit that he fell into. Um, they don't want to see Batman eating a ham sandwich and being depressed. They want to see Superman, like, flying into space and punching some alien ship in the nose and it blowing up. Like, just... Super action-packed, ridiculous things. Putting your heroes in jeopardy and having them fight their way out of it. That is, like, such a simple and, like, from square one um, way to tell a story. I mean, it. this isn't rocket science. It's, like, just doing some edge-of-your-seat exciting stuff with exciting heroes who are better than us who are bigger than us that we want to be like when we grow up that we want to be like when we're already adults we should be striving to be more like superheroes and we should not be bringing superheroes down to our level so that we could relate to them there's no reason for that they're heroes they're not ordinary normies it's not like oh we have our super normies um, these are just people who are very normal just like you and me they have normal jobs and they're very boring and they have depression like that is not a superhero comic that is like some indie comic crap that you could get at the library okay superheroes need to be super they need to be doing heroic things they need to be doing amazing things and they need to be making you feel like you could be a better person by reading that 
you know? Like, I can't imagine a kid right now reading a Tom King Batman book and then putting the book down going, dude, I can't wait to be Batman. Oh my gosh, let's play Batman right now. I'm going to be Batman. You be the bad guy. I'm going to be Batman. You be the bad guy. Um, but, like, right now they'd pick it up and they go, oh, man, I don't want to be Batman. I want to be Bane. Like, who would want to be Batman right now? God, for the last 73 issues, his life's been getting worse and worse, and he's really upset about it. Like, if you want to grow your audience, you need to start them young. You know, you have to. And the only way to do that is to give younger readers something to look up to, something to believe in, something to aspire to be, you know? Okay, so now here is a next thing, and it kind of goes in with what this is. So number four would be better house standards and less um, writer and artist control. Um, what I mean by this is a long time ago, um, you could pick up a Marvel comic or a DC comic, and for the most part, like you wouldn't be able to tell who the artist was because there was a standard house style for how these characters should look. And I really think that's a great idea. And one thing that has always bothered me um, about modern comics is that writers and artists, instead of feeling like they are stewards of this great property, they feel like they own it when they're the writer on it. And they don't. Um, at any time, they could be fired. And at any time, they could retcon everything you just did. Um, I mean, that's just, that's going on right now with X-Men. I mean, if you were writing an X-Men book before um, Hickman came on, um, what was the point? Especially when you knew Hickman was coming and you knew they were going to retcon everything. Like, or um, Grant Morrison's Batman run before the New 52. You know, like, what the hell? You know, like, these writers, these artists, they are not the ones who get to decide um, what a character looks like, what a character acts like. One thing that I absolutely hate and takes me out of um, comics a lot is when, um, especially when they'll have like different artists on one book, it's so jarring and it takes me completely out of the story. But um, there should be more uniformity in what the characters look like even than just a symbol on their chest. Like, it shouldn't be like, oh, wait, who, oh, okay, that's a bat on his chest, that's Batman then. There should be way more than that. Like, <clears throat> there needs to be just standards put into place, and how that's going to come about is through editorial, and which is my number five. There needs to be one main editor whose job isn't to... Um, take writers by the hand and walk them through buildings to the bathroom and make sure their um, cup of hot cocoa is warm, okay? Their job is to know everything there is to know about the continuity of the characters that they are overseeing and be able to work with the writers and have the balls to tell them, you can't do this you need to change it to this because, again, this is not your character. You are just writing this character for us, the company. Um, and one thing that has always bothered me about comics, especially when you have comics like you have Batman and Detective Comics, you have Superman, and you have Action Comics, you have, um, well, when I was a kid, you had Spider-Man, 
or the Amazing Spider-Man, the Sensational Spider-Man, Web of Spider-Man. You had all these books, and I never understood why there was different books for the same character, and how could this be happening in this book when this is happening in this book. One editor, and I'll even give you one editor for each like group. So you have a Batman or a bat book editor, a Superman or super book editor, and then maybe like a justice league editor, um, and an editor to oversee all of those things. So one that all the other editors talk to as like, okay, these are the characters we're going to be using this for the next six months. Is that okay? And then the editor would say yes or no. And the books would have to, like, at least acknowledge that the other books exist. Okay? There shouldn't be, like... And, I'm again, I'm talking about just the main DC line. I'm not talking about Black Label. I'm not talking about Elseworlds-type stories. And I'm not even talking about the weird Vertigo YA titles or whatever. I'm just talking about your main superhero books. Because for DC to exist, they basically need to cut everything with the exception of Batman books, Superman books, and your Justice League books. Those are all you should have. And all the characters that you have at DC, all of the new ones, like the Terrifics, um, and what were some of those other new batch that they came out with like a year ago or something like that they had all these team books with new characters i think it would have been <clears throat> smarter to bring those characters in to other teams like one at a time and then give them a reason to have them all have their own team if the sales numbers made that possible um but just like splooging out like Marvel's doing like just splooging out like a million books about anybody anytime whatever just to have a shit ton of books in the comic book store is a horrible idea um so I don't know that's basically um my beef just newsstands cut your books Consolidate your characters, um, make your stories action packed, make your house standards, bring those up a bit, have less writer slash artist control, and have one editor. Um, you do these things, you could cut a ton of costs. And again, if you're going back to um, newsprint to save comics, no one's going to get mad at you. No one's going to care. We would rather have comics than have comics on slick pages. Um, so if you have any comments about anything I'm talking about, please leave it down below. I would love to hear what you have to say. Um, and if I had any wrong information and in what I was saying, let me know down below. Um, because I am not, a. Uh, I'm not brilliant at this, you know, like I'm not like, I don't know this, like the back of my hand. I'm just talking from a common sense standpoint. So, um, thanks for watching. Um, and I will talk to you soon.